Today we're going to look at one of the new Hornby Class 66 locomotives which they've released in a number of liveries. Today we're going to look at one of the new Hornby Class 66 locomotives which they've released in a number of liveries. This is based on the old Lima tooling that they've acquired a few years ago, but with an updated motor and chassis. They've uh, brought a whole batch out of these and at a very competitive price. Uh, you can pick them up for about £67. Um, so let's go and have a look and see what they look like. So for this particular model there's a, a set of metal nameplates and some other accessories including uh, vacuum pipes. Take the locomotive itself out. You can see the paintwork is very um, well done up to very high modern standards. Uh, some people have commented that the, the orange in the GBRF livery is slightly the wrong shade. Um, but um, I've seen all sorts of different shades um, on the real thing. So a little bit of light weathering will no doubt uh, disguise any differences. Um, as I said, because it's the old Lima tooling, we can see that the there's no actual lights. They're just painted on markers and the uh, body side only has uh, two access doors whereas the uh, later class 66 is including the GBRF ones uh, 66/7s had a third door so the uh, body is not really suitable for all uh, particular combinations of 66 um, however it is uh, a heck of a lot cheaper than uh, competing models from Backman or the soon to arrive Hatton's one. And for um, someone who's just starting out in model railways or someone who's young, uh, this one's actually been bought for my son, um, they're ideal uh, and of course they're DCC ready. One thing to note is there are traction tyres on the uh, two of the wheels here to give it a bit of extra pulling power. Uh, some people have noted that these models don't have as much pulling power as the much heavier models that are currently available from Backman. However, there's obviously plenty of space inside for you to add some extra weight to improve that, especially over the power bogey there. Um, and of course, uh, although the lights aren't um, actually um, proper lighting, there's nothing stopping you adding that at a later date. The body just needs pulling apart and easing off. There's no screws or anything like that. And as you can see inside, it's DCC ready. Um, cabs are fairly basic bits of plastic really, but uh, of course we can always uh, add a member of Aslef into the, the cab to make it look a bit more um, like a working locomotive. Um, as you can see, fairly basic, but plenty of room for either adding extra weight or adding some DCC sound, and that will be the next step in our project. This is one of Hornby's uh, digital TTS sound decoders. They're a lot cheaper than regular sound decoders, but they do have some limitations. So they can only play two sounds at the same time. For example, a chuffing or engine sound and a horn or whistle. However, that's not a big drawback, considering that they can be bought for around £35. 
uh, recommended list price is just over 40 so between 35 and 40 pounds gets you a sound decoder for quite a wide variety of types that are available uh, they compare that with 100 to 120 pounds that you pay for a sort of full fat sound decoder and you can see that this is a, a big bargain very comprehensive manual and here's the inside of the 66 first thing to note is that you've got a blanking plate there of course which is what enables it to run on DC so we'll just ease that off very carefully and here is the sound decoder and what you need to look out for is there should be a little number one on the chip which enables you to put it round the right way just about just about see it in that corner there and that needs to match up with the same corner on the decoder socket there Not a problem if you get it the wrong way round because all that happens is that the engine will run backwards. So there's plenty of space in here. And I'm just going to use a little bit of black tack, which is a stickier version of blue tack, to secure the speaker in place. That's it, nice and secure. And the uh, body just fits back onto the engine, just clips back into place. Nice and firmly. And we're all ready to test that out on the track to see what it sounds like. So, engine start. Leave it on. Thank you. 